Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you a game called Arcadia. It's by one of my favorite designers, Rudiger Dorn. It plays in about 45 minutes for two to four players, in a, and it's for ages 10 and up. It casts you as architects who are going to be trying to complete a city and a castle. And the game's a really unique combination of a tile laying game, trying to figure out a spatial puzzle to optimize your moves, and a stock market game where you're essentially going to be speculating on the values of seals that you collect for completing buildings. Um, I'll take a moment to show you how the rules play, or how the game plays, and then I'll come back here and give you my final thoughts on the game. Okay, so I've set up what might be a few turns into a two-player game of Arcadia just to help with the uh, rules explanation. Each player is going to get one of these player shields with a number of flags that they could use for scoring. They're going to start the game with uh, three workers in their color, which will look like this. You could keep those behind your, uh, your player shield to keep those secret. You'll acquire more workers whenever you score in your color, and you'll also acquire neutral workers um, when you place on the board. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, and then each player is going to get four cards that allows them to build four buildings. Um, it tells you both the shape of the building that you're going to be building and the color of seal that you're going to place on it. So in this game, you're going to be playing architects who are helping to construct a city and a castle. And um, in doing that, you're going to earn seals from the uh, families, the uh, influential families within the uh, the uh, city. So as those families' fortunes rise and fall over the course of the game, which will be determined by placing um, their seals into the palace, um, you are going to be able to turn those in for these coins, which will be victory points at the end of the game. So the uh, turn structure of the game is pretty simple. You have to do one of two things, and then you have an optional scoring. So the two things that you could do on your, your turn are to either play a card. So let's say I'm the uh, orange player here, and uh, the back of your your uh, player sheet, or your player shield, does explain the uh, turn order right here. Okay, so your first option would be to play a card. And again, it shows you the color of seal that goes on the card and the shape that you take. There's a supply of shapes that will be laid out at the start of the game, and they correspond to each card, so you won't run out. So this player would take a shape like this and a seal like this, and then they would get to place it onto the board. Now, you could place it adjacent to any worker that's already on the board, so that would be a legal placement because it's next to a worker. Any building that's on the board, so like that would be a legal placement, or up here would be a legal placement, or next to the castle. Um, so, this player might, for example, choose to place it here, and they would put their seal on it like that, and in doing so, they would completely surround, not counting diagonal, this building. Whenever a player does that, they get to claim the seal that is on the building, so they would get to take, you know, the, the uh, gold seal here, and then they get to choose one of these uh, palace pieces to add to the palace which will affect the value of the seals. Since they collected a gold seal, they might choose one of these gold uh, palace markers. And you can see each one has a seal on the top. So the way that the palace works is it has a, you know, a number of spaces on it, and there are some seals pre-printed on there. So when you place onto that, you can either place over an empty space or you can place over another space, altering the value of the, uh, the seals in question. So for example, if I place a gold seal here, let's say I place it on that space there. Now you can see three gold seals, so each gold seal will be worth three points. And I've covered up a white seal, so the white seals would be worth only one point. Then, you know, the black and red seals, those are going to be worth two points each, or two coins each, if you chose to sell them. So after you do your basic action, you could choose to sell. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, this wouldn't be a great strategic move since you only get uh, four. Um, sale actions over the course of the game, but let's say the uh, the orange player, they wanted to expend one of their flags from their player shield to do a sale. You can see you get to turn in any number of, of uh, tokens, so they only have this one. They would turn that in. You would look at the current value of the uh, yellow seals, that would be three, and then you would take gold points and add them behind your shield, so three gold points, and add them behind your shield. Those would be end game scoring. Whenever you also do a scoring, you're going to get two neutral or two workers of your color, rather, and you'll add those behind your shield. So you take those and add those behind your shield. So now now I'll explain the uh, second possible action that you could do on your turn, which is to place workers. So 
you could place workers around any one building, and workers are generally going to be used to... Actually, that should have been claimed. I'll explain that why in a moment. Um, workers are going to be used to complete buildings. So, for example, if I place a worker right here, that would surround this building. But because you could place any number of workers on your turn, either neutral or of your color, that might be an even better move because it will complete two buildings. Um, they have to be all adjacent to one building. So the, all of the workers I placed just now were adjacent to this building, but it actually surrounds this and this building. So because there's no empty spaces or orthogonally adjacent to any side of those two buildings. So for doing that, again, the orange player would get these two symbols. They would get you know the seal, the gray seal here, and the uh, red seal here. But for workers that are in your color, not for neutral workers, those are just used to help you complete surrounding a building. But for workers in your, in your color, you are going to get extra seals. So here, you'll get the, uh, the one gray seal for completing the building, and then you'll get another gray seal for having a worker here. And then here, they would get the one red seal for completing the building, and then one, two, three red seals for having workers next to it in their color. You notice that this guy paid off both on this building and this building. So place, trying to anticipate where buildings might sprout up and placing your workers strategically so that they're going to get multiple payouts is one of the key elements of the game. Since the uh, player here completed two buildings, they're going to get to choose two of these um, castle, castle tiles that they could add to the castle. So in placing these, they could choose them in any order. Um, since they've collected a lot of red, they might want to just place two red and really boost the, uh, the uh, price of red. And then they might want to do a sale, it, because now red would be worth one, two, three, four each. So if they turn in those four red tokens, um, they would get 16 points. Um, they would be welcome to hold on to any or all if, of the uh, seals that they didn't want to turn in when they did a scoring. Um, since these are only worth one, it would probably, probably make sense to hold on to them until a future sale. You'll notice that they place these both on level one. That's because every seal that's placed during the first round has to be placed on the first level. So over the course of the game, as buildings get completed, this is going to fill up. And these will keep getting placed here. Again, every time a building is completed, you get to, to uh, place one until the entire first floor is complete. When that happens, the end of the first phase is triggered. The two remaining tiles are here. Go over here for the end game. And then you move on to phase two. So then as soon as a building is completed in phase two, you get to start adding to level two of the, uh, of the structure. And as soon as level two is completed, two more of these will come over here. And then each player is going to get one final turn where they could do one more move and use pieces from this area here. At the end of that, you'll end up scoring. So there are a few small rules that I should go back and fill in the gaps on. Uh, first of all, after you play a building, you get to draw either from the uh, face down deck or from one of the face up cards, add to your hand and then that'll get replenished. Um, so you always are going to have four cards to pick from. Uh, second of all, to recruit neutral workers, you're going to, whenever you cover up, you'll notice some of these spaces have tents on them. Whenever you cover up one of those tent spaces or even multiple tent spaces with a building, so for example, if I placed, um, let's see, it's not a great example, but if I place this one here, assuming that was a legal move, it would cover up two tents, I would get two neutral workers. If you use a worker to cover up one of those tent spaces, you do not get neutral workers, but that's how you're going to get more workers other than getting your workers when you do a scoring. So you start with three and you only get two each time you score, so timing those scorings is important. So just back to the end of the game, um, once everybody's taken one last turn and played tiles possibly from here, there's going to be one last uh, scoring and every player will turn in any tokens that they have not yet used and get the uh, gold value for those as it finally sits at the end of the game. Um, whoever has the most gold at the end of that will be the winner. Okay, so that is Arcadia. Um, like I said at the start of the video, Rudiger Dorn is one of my favorite designers, and this is one of the 
uh, one of my favorite designs from him. I think that has a really unique um, meshing of two genres. Again, the uh, speculation, stock trading genre, and the tile placement genre. But it does that in a pretty seamless way. And although the theme is not the strongest, you know, I'm not exactly certain why these architects are trying to woo these families, um, I guess just to earn gold. Um, while the theme is not that strong, I think that the mechanics of the game, you know, play beautifully. And in a 45 minute to at most an hour long game, um, you have a lot of uh, strategy and a lot of different skill sets that are going, going to be tested. Uh, the game plays well from two to four players. I, I probably prefer it with three or four over two, uh, but it does play fine at two. Uh, and I think that the uh, unique meshing of mechanisms is something that you don't see in a lot of uh, contemporary uh, Euro games. It's almost more akin to something like a choir than um, a modern Euro game, like a worker placement game or something like that. So um, overall, I would definitely recommend Arcadia. I think that's relatively easy to get. There was an American printing of it, so you could find a copy if it's not in print now. You can find a copy on the used market. Um, so those are my thoughts on Arcadia, and thank you for watching.